let's review. This is the real meat and potatoes of geometry, are right triangles and special right triangles, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. This is the Pythagorean theorem. It controls everything, all right triangles. We went over some of this stuff last summer, but I'd like to review it. Rather than always start with the Pythagorean triangle, know that if you're solving for the hypotenuse, it's always this. And if you're solving for one of the short sides, it's always this minus the other side squared. So normally I'm a pretty big proponent in only memorizing one thing and figuring out everything else after that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to solving right triangles, I definitely think that you're much better off memorizing these two right here. Just because nobody wants to algebraically have to manipulate this to solve for C, or A, or B. Mm -hmm. So, memorizing it like this, and the only thing you have to remember is always start your answer off with square root of. You don't really have to memorize this second one. It's the same as this one. In other words, if you're solving for a short side, it's the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other short side squared. Okay. So let's just practice some of these. What's X? Or uh, 52, uh, square root of 52, 7.2. Yeah, I don't care about that. Let's just say it's the square root of 6 squared plus 4 squared. That's, that's what I really would like to see yeah. for an answer. The fact that that's square root of 52, I'm never going to. First of all, let's talk about that. You're, <coughs> you're at a point in geometry now where they're never going to have you turn that into a decimal. If they do... Somebody should be hung. That is not simplified. In other words, what that is, is this. But this is the answer always, not some rounded off decimal. In other words, when you gave it to me as a decimal, you were rounding it off. We don't want to ever see radicals rounded off. It's like saying pi is 3.14. You just leave it as pi. All right. Or square root of 13. In other words, if it's a ration, irrational number, which this is, then the best thing to do is to leave it in a radical form. Whoops, hold on. What's X? In other words, I want to make sure you can... 38 minus 36. Perfect. Square root of 2. Okay. So you're good at right triangles, which is great. I mean... I love it that you don't have to go back to that, that you can go straight into the solution. So you can solve any right triangle that they give you two of the three sides, right? Mm -hmm. The only other thing you really have to be good at is solving similar triangles where they only give you one of the sides and 
the triangle is one of these special triangles. These are considered the two special triangles. Okay? So they may give you a problem like, okay, that's three. Solve for that. In other words, they only give you one of the three sides. And you cannot solve it using the Pythagorean theorem. What you need to do is memorize the triangle that is similar to this. I call them my unit special triangles. And the reason I call them that is because the shortest side is one in both situations. What you need to know is what are the other two dimensions here. In other words, in order for us to solve this problem that I just circled, you need to know what the dimensions of the unit triangle are. If one is opposite the 30 degree, what is opposite the 60? Two. Square root of three, and then the two is the hypotenuse. Okay. And over here, it's this. Now, you cannot solve this problem without trig, and you haven't really learned the trig that you need to solve the problem yet with trig, but... In order to solve it, you need to know what the dimensions of this triangle are. So what I'd like you to really do is memorize what's on the top of the page here, both of these triangles. In other words, be able to recreate those from scratch. Now when I go to solve this triangle here, What's the linear ratio between this triangle and this triangle? Big to little. Two to one. No. Or three to one. Three to one, exactly. So what is X? Three root three. Yeah, you got it. You learned this stuff. We did mostly this kind of stuff over the summer. You knew it pretty good then. What's this side here? Three root two. It's the hypotenuse. Or, oh, okay. Oh, so, oh, sorry. I was looking at the other triangle, six. All right. That's good. Okay, now we're going to make it just a little tougher. It's pretty easy when you're figuring out this. Uh, which term are you more familiar with, the similarity ratio or the linear ratio? Similarity ratio. Okay. Did you say linear? Uh, no. Oh, you said similarity? Okay. Yes, Good. Similarity. That's the term I actually like also. Uh, so, you know that you got to figure out the similarity ratio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have this triangle here. What is both X and Y? What's the similarity ratio? How'd you get the similarity ratio with the other problem? The difference, or just the two. <coughs> you divided corresponding sides, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, this side was three, this corresponding side is one, 3 divided by 1 gives you the similarity ratio. So how am I going to get the similarity ratio with this triangle compared to this triangle? Let's divide 3 by 5 by 2. That's it. Now what does that make Y? Um. One root five two. Good. 
one, one root five divided by two. In other words, it's one times my similarity ratio, right? Okay. Okay. And what's x? Root 15 divided by two. Really good. Okay. In other words, it gets slightly more difficult when one of the corresponding sides is irrational and the other is rational because then you have to deal with these irrational numbers. Let's do this one over here. What if that is root 3? What is that? Root 6? Uh-huh. And of course that's root 3. All right. Sounds like you've retained that information well. So you should be able to solve all right triangles, whether they're giving you two pieces of the right triangle and, you know, you need to use the Pythagorean formula to do it, or whether they just give you one piece. In, in reality, they're really giving you more than one piece of information here because they're giving you the angles. Whereas mm -hmm. when you have a tr more traditional right triangle where I say that's 4 and that's 7, I don't care what these angles are. They're not pertinent. Because all I know is that's the square root of 4 squared plus 7 squared. Mm -hmm. So when they give you only one side, but they're telling you it's either a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90, that's as good as giving you two sides and no angles. Wow. I, I had a student that I, I spent hour and a half to two hours going over the principles that you and I have covered in 15 minutes. And you're strong on them. I'm, I'm really happy to see that you're still strong on those. Because these skills that we've covered in the last 15 minutes almost constitute the entire thing you need to know for the ACT exam. You're a junior, right? I'm a sophomore. Well, you're still a sophomore. Okay. So you got a, mm -hmm. a ways to go. But the ACT exam is all algebra and geometry. And most of the geometry is right triangles. Uh, it's, it's very little of the geometry that you've spent the last four months learning. In other words, there's not about a lot about rhombuses and trapezoids and parallelograms. There's a little bit, but mainly it's about solving triangles. A typical problem, in fact, perhaps the classic problem is the following. Both the 45 and 45 and the 30, and the 30, 60. The thing is to solve for x. Oh. In other words, you have basically two triangles here. One is a 30, 60, 90, and the other is a 45, 45, 90. And you can't solve for x until you can solve for that side right there. So it's a two-step process. So let's solve for Z to begin with. What is Z? Always start with your similarity ratio. Well, the similarity ratio in this triangle is what? Oh, six to one. Six to two. That's why it is so important for you to memorize the dimensions of this triangle. I guess I was right. That was a two. Okay. Six to two. Yeah. In other words, you can't solve this without knowing these dimensions. Now, let me just say this: that these dimensions aren't fixed. I don't care if it's two, two root three 
or four, it's the relationship that matters. It's the ratio that matters. So you may actually, in some school systems, they actually label the 45-45 a little differently than I do. They label this thing square root of 2, square root of 2, and 2. And it has everything to do with trig. But notice that that triangle is the, almost the same as this triangle. It's this triangle multiplied by square root of 2. It doesn't matter. In other words, this is as good a model to memorize as this one here. But you have to memorize 1. Otherwise, you cannot come up with the similarity ratio. Since I like to call them my unit special triangles, I always use 1 as opposite the smallest angle in both of them. Okay, so let's look at this triangle. What's the similarity ratio? 6 to 2 if you reduce it to 3 to 1. So what's Z? 3. And now what is X? In other words, now we go to this triangle. What's the similarity ratio? Oh, this one. Uh, it's three to one. Okay. So three root two. Good. And this is a classic problem. In other words, you need to know both of those triangles to be able to solve that problem. Good. And I notice the next chapter is circles. Um, before we go to circles, or even talk about circles, I notice, I didn't understand why, but they started out chapter 9 on right triangles with this problem. This problem says that if you take any right triangle and you draw an altitude from the vertex opposite the hypotenuse, and that's what altitudes do, is they go perpendicularly to the other side. What ends up happening is that you've created two triangles that are similar to one another and similar to the big triangle. In other words, we now have three triangles that are similar. Triangle A is similar to triangle B, and both of them are similar to the big triangle we started with. Okay, it's just kind of an, an odd problem, and not sure why they start the chapter out with this concept, but they do. And the only thing difficult here is figuring out corresponding sides. Let me label some points here, and let's just make sure you can do it. We have triangle one. <coughs> We have triangle two. Let's just talk about them relative to one another. We know they're similar, right? Mm -hmm. What are similar sides? In other words, what is the corresponding side of triangle two compared to triangle one? Obviously, the hypotenuse is the same, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, AB is corresponding to A, C. They're both the hypotenuses. What's corresponding to A, D? D, C. Or no, not D, or not D, C. No. A, C. Um, excuse me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't state that, that properly. Um, for triangle two, the side AD, this side right here, okay. which is the corresponding side on triangle one. 
BD. Yeah. And that's what makes this problem hard, is that it's completely rotated. It's not in the same orientation at all. So you always know that if you have similar right triangles, the hypotenuse is corresponding to the other hypotenuse. So you know that. But it's pretty tricky sometimes figuring out the short sides. Now, kind of the way I do it is if I look at my big triangle, I can see that's the smallest angle. Mm -hmm. So the side opposite in my big triangle, the side opposite my smallest angle is AB. Well, that's also got to be the smallest angle in triangle number two. So AB is corresponding with AD, as in David, in terms of the similarity between the big triangle and triangle two. Yeah. And likewise, uh, between these two triangles, you know that that's the smallest angle of this triangle. Ooh, how do we know that, though, visually? But you're not always going to be able to tell it visually. In other words, if they give you a problem more like this, in other words, where this is almost a, yeah, that's an isosceles triangle, and now... It's not so easy because that's 45, that's 45, which have, means that has to be 45 and that has to be 45. So I guess there really isn't a problem, but what I was thinking about was when I look at that, I can't immediately know what the smallest angle is on the large right triangle. And, and that's helpful. In other words, if I draw a, a right triangle like this, regardless of what this angle is, I know it's the smallest angle. So when I then draw my similar triangles, I know that's the smallest angle, so this side is opposite that smallest angle. Well, if this is the smallest angle in triangle number two, then this has to be the smallest angle in triangle number one, right? Mm -hmm. Because this clearly would be bigger than this. In other words, of the two circles, in other words, when I look at the big triangle, angle C clearly is smaller than angle B which means that when I look at triangle number one, angle B has to be the bigger of the two angles. So this angle here is theta, same as this theta here, which means that AD is corresponding to BD because they are both opposite the smallest angle. And for some reason, I have always found that that's the easiest way to find corresponding sides when it's not oriented right. In other words, they're not always going to orient similar triangles like this. When they orient them like that, you don't have any problems telling which are the corresponding sides, right? But make this one upside down like that, and now it becomes difficult. So the secret in finding corresponding sides between similar right triangles is frequently finding the smallest side of the right triangle and the or the smallest angle and the side opposite that angle use that as your reference point. In other words, if theta is the smallest angle in this triangle, and theta is the smallest angle in that triangle, then I know that this side is corresponding to this side. Mm -hmm. And 
I always like similarity ratios that are greater than one. I had quite a few geometry students last year that had uh, NSAC. Ball, yeah. Ballsack, whatever his name is. Hansack. Uh, Hansack, um, who insists that everybody do small to large. And I kept trying to talk all my students into doing large to small. And the difference is when you do large to small, you're always dealing with a similarity ratio that's greater than one. Whereas when you do small to large, you're dealing with a similarity ratio that's less than one. Well, you remember last semester when you had um, linear ratios, area ratios, and volume ratios? Yeah. Well, if you take a number greater than one and you square it, you expect it to get bigger, and it does. And then you cube it, it gets even bigger. Well, Mr. Hansack was having everybody deal with numbers that were less than one, like three-fourths. And the only reason that's really confusing is when you take a number like three-fourths and you square it to come up with the area ratio, it gets smaller. That becomes nine-sixteenths. That's a smaller number than three-fourths. And when you cube it, it gets even smaller. So it was causing a lot of confusion with students because they're, they're just not used or when you take the square root. In other words, if they gave you the area ratio and wanted you to come up with the linear ratio, you had to take the square root of that number. And that really confused people because now the number got bigger, even though you were taking the square root of it. So there were all kinds of problems that came up based on the fact that these were being taken little to big instead of big to little. So I like big to little in all yeah. regards, whether you're doing similar triangles or whether you're doing this relationship between linear ratio, area ratio, and volume ratio. Uh, big to little just makes more sense. It's easier to work with numbers greater than one as opposed to less than one. All right. You should be in pretty good shape. What'd you get for a grade last semester, Cole? Um, I got a 85 on the final, and I got a 80 on the on the class. So you got a B? Yeah. Well, good. I I don't know why you didn't get an A, because you seem to know most everything we cover. Um. But but B isn't bad. Maybe we can maybe we can get an A out of you this semester. Yeah, hopefully. It's more, well. it's more meat and potatoes geometry this semester. It's not as much of the arc, uh, the stuff that you never are going to have to know again. <laughs> yeah. The stuff you learn this semester is going to be closer to what we went over this last summer. So uh, you're in good shape at this point. Maybe we can always kind of keep you ahead a little bit. But what comes after right triangles is circles. Circles are pretty easy. And then surface area, you've covered all of that. So, All right. So we'll just plan on 3.30 on every Monday? Yeah. Sounds good. Talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Thank you very much.